5 chip was the very first dual-core processor offered by Apple, and was introduced in the iPad 2 first, followed by the iPhone 4S, then the iPod Touch 5, and finally, the iPad Mini first gen. Each of these devices also reached the end of their cycle, with iOS 9 being the last major software update they would receive. Hi, welcome to the TC. My name's David, and today I'm going to explain how iOS 9 killed the A5 processor. iOS 9 was released on September 16th, 2015, and was originally made with the intent of fully supporting the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus. However, the devices that received this update that had an A5 processor severely lagged when trying to do literally anything. Turn on the screen? Lag. Want to open notifications? Lag. Spotlight search? Lag. I think you get the point. The problem with this is that many people would find using the products to be too cumbersome and felt forced the upgrade. Which brings us up to the issue of planned obsolescence. With iOS 9, it's difficult to tell if Apple was really trying to force its user base to upgrade, or it genuinely didn't mean to slow down these devices to a crawl. Personally, I believe that they thought that the dual core processors would be able to handle the tasks that iOS 9 demanded, since there wasn't as many changes from iOS 8. However, what didn't fall into consideration was the fact that these devices had a max of 512 megabytes of RAM. Because of this, they aren't able to handle many apps at once and often have to reload apps in the background. What also didn't help is that the iPad 2 and the iPad mini were the only A5 devices that could clock up to 1000 MHz while the iPhone 4S and iPod Touch 5 were stuck at 800 MHz. Honestly, the only devices that would be able to run OK in iOS 9 were the iPad 2 and iPad mini, since they featured higher clock speeds and had much lower resolution screens, which would be less demanding than its Retina display counterparts. Although this is true, iOS 9 still found ways in absolutely slowing these devices down to a crawl. Looking back at benchmarks, we find the scores to be, well, below par. The iPad mini scoring. <clears throat> Comparing this to the generation after, the iPad mini 2, well, things look even worse. Although iOS 9 really hurt these A5 power devices, I still think that they have some use today, and don't necessarily deserve to be thrown in a drawer. The best use case for these older devices is for a kid. Even though it doesn't support everything, there are so many apps that you can use and it provides a good gateway to introducing your child to owning their own device. Since these devices aren't too expensive, it won't hurt as much to see them get more abuse from a child, but I would still throw it in a protective case. That being said, I can't recommend people go out and buy a device that has an A5 processor. If you own one, then yeah, use it, like I previously stated, but buying one is out of the question. Prices are too high for such little performance, and I would rather recommend spending money on something like the base iPad for $329 or the iPhone SE2 for $399 if you're looking for something for yourself that would be quick and run the latest software instead. Or if you're strapped for cash, even something like the original SE isn't bad, and it's even going to get iOS 14 coming out this fall, so that's the win. So, do you still own a device with an A5 processor? Do you still use it? Also, do you think that iOS 9 was an instance of plan obsolescence? Comment down below, and if you liked what you saw, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching!